we're using the taxpayers' money, and therefore the arts really are for everybody. And that idea of access is terribly important. And I think that learning the arts and learning through the arts shouldn't stop in elementary school and it shouldn't stop in high school or college. It really should be something that is available to all Vermonters throughout their lives. And often you see some of the most remarkable work coming out of older people as they reflect on their lives. I think part of the responsibility of using the public funds is to continue that broad access as well as to make sure we're um, living up to our responsibility of, uh, for children in schools. Arthur Williams, I think, uh, appeared on the Vermont scene during the Place to Scene era. Uh, it was when there was a sea covering the northwest quadrant of Vermont. Uh, no, Arthur, Arthur was a fixture in Vermont, I think, from the 1960s on. One of his good friends in the legislature was the person who would become governor, Phil Hoff. And when they were discussing who would be a good person to head up the fledgling Vermont Arts Council, well, Vermont Council in the Arts at the time, um, Phil Hoff said, well, it's, you know, there's a no-brainer to me, and he appointed his friend Arthur Williams. After he was with the Vermont Arts Council, um, he took several years off and then came back and led the drive to reestablish the State House to its former glory. He believed that one of the significant roles that the arts plays um, and where the government's role is most profound is when you create opportunities for everybody to experience the arts. The, the first time I really associated Gary with this work and with the potential for receiving the Arthur Williams Award, um, it was because a huge stack of, of mail was dumped on my desk for review by staff to select the next um, Arthur Williams Award winner, and all but two of them were for Gary Eckhart. And they were all different, they were all personal you know, nominations, each depicting many of the same qualities, but having their own independent story. It was a really effective packet of information I got, and I went, well, they're kind of making this a little easier than we usually have. He really is one of the main drivers and caretakers of art and culture in the Mad River Valley. He's, he's on it the whole time. And people, I think, not only really like him and, and I would say almost to the point of adulation, but they respect him. And he's, he, he doesn't try to impose too much. It's a very inclusive approach to everything. It's really wonderful to, to be with him because just doors automatically open to him. It's wonderful. How it went when I got the news that this award would be in my name was uh, being speechless. And as you can tell, I'm often not speechless. <laughs> I'm comfortable talking, but I could not say anything. I was rather floored and completely honored. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, uh, it's definitely something that touches my heart. I'm very pleased. This is a well-deserved award. In fact, I'm delighted that we've had the sense to do what other states have already done and given him awards. I think that he has shown himself very well-deserving of such an award. I'm particularly happy to have learned about his advocacy for uh, the nonprofit world, both arts and otherwise, in speaking to the uh, legislature and the public at broad uh, about the tax caps on donations that were, were being studied last year. I think that is such an important stance that he has taken and I'm pleased how hard he's been working on that and I'm pleased to see his history in advocacy and that particular one for Vermont. When I found out that the Arts and Education Award was going to be named for me, my major emotion was gratitude. The arts in 
children's lives and the arts as formative in human development and perception and even in our ability to get along together and understand each other has been such a core value for me and such an uh, abiding uh, concern um, that to be recognized in that way and for my work in the arts and education was, is just a very deep pleasure. These are four very special people who helped us and others learn how to do this early on. Karen might be described as the person who has most introduced dance to young people in Vermont for the longest period of time. As an artist in residence in the early 80s and then in her dance camps in Burlington, I wonder if we've ever counted how many people were introduced to dance and, be, and, be, and came to love dance because of Karen. What's really important is that she showed them movement and how there are many, many different forms of movement and how that is a core part of life. Because when you think about it, relatively few people become choreographers or professional dancers, but we dance and we can see dance our whole lives. And so to be introduced to dance and to uh, love it is uh, a great gift that Karen has given so many people. I just remember sitting in a circle in a school with kids and John singing and the looks on their faces and then getting them singing. And the word joy comes to mind because I, I don't know who else has brought the joy of music uh, to Vermont children as much as John Gale Moore as long as he has and he has never lost that joy. When I was at the Arts Council, I had a very firm belief about hiring artists as administrators as well as teachers. Jeff also then became an artist in residence, went to work for the Department of Education, and then has become the poetry slam king of Vermont. And again, you have somebody with just intense, immense enthusiasm bringing people into the joy of words and the joy of poetry and expanding their view of what poetry is in a very significant way. Jeff's made a huge difference. Veranda Porch, I believe, was the first poet teacher at the Governor's Institute and finished just finished 30 years, the longest serving uh, artist at the Governor's Institute for the Arts and, and such a force. Veranda not only has an amazing way of interacting with young people, but she has taken poetry to and extracted poetry from people of all ages. She's worked in her community of Guilford, she's worked in nursing homes, uh, she's worked in so many different um, forums and just has this genius of hearing the story and hearing the poetry in people's experiences. Uh, I really value her for all of that work. I didn't know Walter Self well, but I sought him out as when I was director of the Flynn and went to meet him. He was charming. His, his home was just full of art. He was extraordinarily generous. You know, really made a mark on Vermont. And we're really lucky that he moved up here after, <laughs> from Brooklyn. <laughs> he and Bill never met, Bill Metcalf, but they would have loved each other. I mean, here, Walter Cerf was a professor of, of philosophy at Brooklyn College, and Bill was a professor of history, but they loved the arts, you know? So it was sort of avocation, vocation, avocation. So I, I'm sorry they didn't meet, but I think it's a nice connection. I'm thrilled that they're getting the award. I mean, I think individually and collectively, they've made a huge impact on Vermont. And I'm, I think it's been it's a long time in coming. Um, and, you know, I mean, Bill founded, uh, co-founded the Baroque Ensemble in the 60s. He helped th bring on board the Mozart Festival by being a kind of Vermont supporter of Mel when he came here. He started the GNS Gilbert and Sullivan performances and, and then Oriana Singers. And Liz has always been 
I mean, it's always been a team. Liz has always been uh, the accompanist. In some cases, she became a regular soloist and performer with the New York Chamber soloists and consequently traveled all over the world with them. And singing with Bill is a joy, but Liz is always part of it. You recognize always that they've talked about it together. She's given input. She, she laughs about being bossy. Well, you don't see that, but you know, she, she gives, so it's a team. They met in French class, but um, their first date was to a performance of the Messiah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Simply said, I'm, I'm thrilled that Bill and Liz have gotten this award. We justify our arts involvement, right, in terms of economic benefit and community building and, and um, uh, uh, co cognition and staying in school. We should also talk about this, the sheer pleasure and satisfaction of making, you know, making a poem, making a dance, playing an instrument, singing in a community or a chorus or a church choir, um, making your own videos. Those are all parts of being human and, and allow us to share our lives with other people.